Hello, everybody. My name is Jason Fox, and today I am going to talk to you about what I had learned in ITT 370. The biggest things that we'll be talking about is the actual overall project, which involved home builders, the, the design of the Wi-Fi network, and the 36 homes, and what is involved in it. But the biggest thing I will talk about the most is the highlights that I had learned over the course of the project. Here, as you can see, this is the project from the start. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward, but it was talking about the proposal of it, the project scope, everything that is involved in the creation process. There's a, there's actually a lot more than I thought. There's a lot of explanation that is required. Most, most, the most, uh, the, the quickest way to describe it is the way that I have to explain it to as if it's somebody that has no idea what anything is. Um, like, for example, for here, it's showing the pro each product and how much the cost is, the, the benefits of each one, as opposed to the old ones, which were currently in place, which were not good at all or not even up to current standards. Uh, one thing that I did learn right away was that the the cost of the project skyrockets if they're trying to build a very high-end reliable network which is is required for this type of home builders expansion the the requirements for each home it, it, need, it needs to be able to handle all the devices and any extra devices that a customer may bring with them to the sample home this is something that took some time and some thought to figure out exactly how to do it but now that I've gone over the basics of what it is, let's get more into the stuff that uh, that I remember the most from the project, which I feel that I had gained the most from, or I will remember the longest. So here we go. Let's get into some highlights. One of the first things we did was we had to explain the difference between wired and wireless networks via a YouTube video. Uh, this one helped me quite a bit because I didn't realize how advanced AC was versus just the N as far as 802.11 was. So, therefore, I'm going to remember it the longest, and I'm definitely going to be pushing for higher end things like that. Now, I had gone over this before in, in other classes, the OSI model, but having it done again, I had learned some new things that helped me understand it even more. It really put, pu pushed into my head the, the seven layer aspect of it. Again, I think this will be something that I will need to practice more in the field to be able to understand it better. The more practice makes it better. Okay, for this part, I actually really enjoyed this part the most, maybe one of the most out of everything. As you can see here, I have the you know, we were supposed to do the proposal, and I, I, I took it as the way as, well, I'm going to basically sell this to people, to a company. So I had sat down, and I made the design of the house. I had to build it inside the program. I made the house, and then I had to lay out where, where I think these things would be. So here, you could see that in the red, there is just the basic Wi-Fi router and a modem. Just sitting out in the middle of the open. I don't like that. I, if I if I ever had to make a home or something to present to somebody, the least amount of stuff in the in the the view area, the better. It needs to feel open. It doesn't need to feel cluttered at all. So I, I that was the basic idea was to show that it looks really bad and it doesn't look good. So that when you get into the newer system that, that's highlighted here in the greens, it has all these things and they're hidden as much as possible. So you have you know the the router uh the the modem the computers the laptop area all these things are all out of the way and here the the router is placed centrally as best as possible in the middle of the home so that the wi-fi signal should never be interrupted at any point and it requires the least amount of wiring to go from there to the modem which will now be located in that closet again 
I like simplicity. I like it when you walk in, you don't see anything. In my opinion, I don't think there should ever have anything visible to the customer if possible. With the kiosks, you know, obviously they have to be there. They got to be stationary. The pads and the, the laptops, they are mobile and they could go throughout the home and they will not lose any signal coverage due to the fact that the router is centrally located. And of course the phones will work directly off the Wi-Fi and have the option of going to the cellular. However, due to security concerns, it will most likely be intended strictly for using the Wi-Fi. In this part, uh, creating the the idea of to be able to show the customer what the network might look like, because the idea of having 36 different sample homes with each one having their own router and everything inside, it is huge. That's why I, I had decided to go with separating it you know, to each one into their groups, but then only showing one sample home. Trying to show a sam uh, each sample home and every single IP and everything a part of every single one would have been completely unreadable. I, I couldn't imagine how large it would have actually have been. Uh, it would not have been very good for presentation purposes for the customer. But in this case here, uh, you have the sample home and, it, and each group is it in a different color. If one of the groups had gone down for security concerns or needed to go down, you could shut down that group, but the other groups will still be able to communicate with the primary and backup servers. So this part, I have always liked this program quite a bit, the, the Cisco Packet Tracer. So one thing that I really, really liked about it was that we had to use the wireless LAN uh, controller to do everything. Prior to this, I really didn't understand what it meant. Now I truly understand what it does. So the wireless controller, what it what it it goes and it checks the network, finds anything that is a wireless device, and you could give it its own basically a path, and nothing else that is not authorized to go on that path can use that section or that controller. I think or that uh that uh, router. I think that is fantastic. I I I, I wish I could have had incorporated it into my design of these sample homes. However, I, I don't think it would be very cost effective for that because the wireless controller itself, they're, they're pretty expensive and trying to justify that to the customer, I don't, I don't think they would buy into it. Uh, it could be possible if they just didn't care and they wanted it, but again, I really like the pack tracer. I like to be able to set up the IPs, just like I mentioned previously. I let, that's something I just I really enjoy doing. It can be kind of of pain, but I like it a lot. So this part, this was also going back to the packet tracer. In that week, we had to make the the network based upon having two PCs, two wireless devices, a router, you know, and the wireless controller and everything. So I went and I designed it, and I really enjoyed it. I, I pre, In the previous classes that we've had, I have not used the wireless portion of the Cisco Packet Tracer, so I had no idea what it looked like. Now once done, it's fantastic. I really like the way it is. I like it, it actually will give the signal coverage of how far away it is from the device based upon meters and all that stuff, on how strong... And it also based upon what type of signal it's giving us to five five gigahertz or two point four gigahertz. It, it's just a great program. It's a good help and a good way to get the idea of how to create your network. You could build it in there and have at least an idea of what it should or should not run like. But anyway, as uh, here I'm, I'm just I'm showing that I did the 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 ping from the PC to PC. I had had problems with it previously where it was not communicate properly, but I got it to work. I got it to run properly. And once it's done, it pings, it pings pretty quickly. Uh, but again, I separated, I, ha I had created two sections of the network, one for, one for the, the company and then one for like the guest. So the guest, portion did not have access to the server at all or to the laptop the signal just ended there it went directly to the internet the internet would be connected to the wireless controller which is not on here 
which it would be a modem, but that's all it is. And it's, pr it's pretty simple. It's actually a pretty simple network, but I really enjoyed doing it. Uh, it's something that I wish we could do more. Now, lastly is the actual cost. The cost was crazy high in this. Uh, here, you know, I, I split it up because I had made a proposed and an alternative for each cost. That way, I don't. I always find it better to give the upfront cost of, hey, this is a. This may sound like a lot, and there's an alternative that it doesn't sound like a lot. But again, you're not going to get nearly as much performance out of it, and you're not going to get longevity out of the product. So that's why you need to have the extra cost. Uh, you know, and here it. I mean, it's it shows that the cost of some of these things is. I mean, it's crazy. It was like you know, four hundred, four hundred thousand plus for the overall project, and you know that that's quite a bit of money. But uh, again, I have to remind myself that that's over thirty-six different locations, which each one has to be built. You know, the labor alone, if the rate is at one hundred fifty dollars, the labor cost is pretty high. But you're installing these things, and you know, as the IT professional, you're going in and you are setting up each of the items. And I know it's like a flat rate sort of thing. So the faster you get it done, the more time you have to stand around it or do the next project, which is good and bad. It may look bad to the customer, but again, you're getting high quality service in return. So speed is good. Um, but again, the the overall project, the the alternative was actually basically ran in just above half of the overall cost. And I find that interesting because I wasn't trying to find products that were half the cost. I was trying to find like the bare minimum. And even the proposed parts were not like high end parts, which were expensive. They were chosen because they would meet the standard and be able to exceed it for uh, some time to come. I didn't want to make it so that the product was not good enough to last a long time. Overall, though, I really enjoyed doing that, researching it. Uh, it's not something that I will try to want to do, but it is definitely something that I will spend more time doing in the future if I need to. So my final thoughts... I, I really did enjoy this class. I found it actually more informative than I thought it would be. Prior to going into it, I thought, oh, it's just Wi-Fi. That's not that hard. It's not that complicated. It's, there's nothing really going on, which, in fact, there's actually quite a bit going on. The 802.11x is pretty important, I found. I found that the you know the IEEE type stuff is also very important. I learned a lot about the wireless controllers, which... Now, and, and anything I do, I'm going to try to push for a wireless controller. I really like how they function. I, I really like that you could do it all from one location. It, I mean, I, I don't know. I really, I, that really surprised me on how cool those things actually are. Uh, I really, I also found that setting up a network with the mindset of the wireless feels to me that it is the future and it will be the standard for what all networks are going to be. I, I have that feeling that, you know, 10 years from now, LAN networks are going to be pretty rare and most companies will be pushing for a wireless network. And most IT guys or gals will be pushing for something like that. They're not going to say, let's do a, a LAN network. They're going to say a wireless network just makes more sense. The wireless is much, it's, it's as fast as LAN at this point. Uh, you know, if you would have asked me five, ten years ago, hey, what would you say? I would say, no, wireless is just not fast enough and it's not secure enough. Uh, again, they both still have their vulnerabilities. Wireless is still vulnerable. However, if you if you set up the network to where it's not visible and you have to have secured passwords and so on and so forth, it is a valid way to set up the network, and it'll be fantastic for employees and for the uh, the customers if they need to use something like that. So I see a good future in it, and I really, I'm actually glad I took this, and I see why this was in the course and why it is a level 300 course and not like a level 100 course.
Uh, again, my name is Jason Fox. I do appreciate it. I appreciate you taking the time to listen, and I hope you all have a nice day. Thank you.